right, on the count of three, you hit pause and go get you some milk and cookies because this is going to be a long one, folks. Yes, this is the December issue of the Yamaha T-Dub Club Report. What am I talking about? Issue, there's no magazine involved here. See how long magazines have been involved in my life? I just think in magazine terms. Okay, let's hit that again. But hey, you go get your milk and cookies right now. Hit the pause. 5-1000, 6-1000, 7-1000, 8-1000, 1-1000. Thousand, okay, here we go. Hello fellow T-Dubbers. GC Rad One here, Yamaha T Dub Club, bringing you the December 2020 T Dub report. I have so much to go over. I've written explicit notes for the whole piece because it's going to be a long one. I did say go get your milk and cookies, correct? All right, hit the pause button and go. All right, giddy up. No, I'm serious. Yeah, go hit the pause button. Hold. Go get the milk and cookies. Yeah, get your beanie too. Because your wife may throw you out on the porch and be like, what are you doing? I know, you're in the basement. I'm down here in the shop. I got my heater going, rolling up underneath the table. It's 34 degrees outside right now. It's chilly. Okay, December 2020. Like, wow. <laughs> what a wacky, crazy year it's been. And uh, one for the record books, for sure. It's all history and behind us. And we will carry on T-dubbing right yeah we will we'll carry on but now i'm not gonna discuss politics here you'll never hear me discuss politics unless it's our t-dubs are better than every other motorcycle on the planet that's the only politics i'm gonna discuss period but i am gonna talk about our health and being healthy because with this COVID-19 splintering into two new strands and a second strand that is even more contagious, this is serious. Some of us are getting old. You know, we're acceptable to these kind of things and we got riding to do. According to Jack Denton of Market Watch, this is the second mutant version of the coronavirus announced by the British government in a week. I think this was last week. Following uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson's announcement on Saturday that a new 70% more contagious variant Variant was behind a recent spike in COVID-19 cases. End quote. All I ask is that you be safe as you can because if you get sick, you're not able to ride. Point blank, right? That's enough reason for us to get healthy, stay healthy, so we can continue riding. We know a lot of you are working and we thank you for your service, especially for those of you in the food, water, shelter, heating and cooling, sewage treatment, gas and electrical municipalities, and the internet providers. We thank all of you because you're kind of at the top of my chart. All the rest of us, we're not essential. We're just, we're just trying to tee up, man. A uh, special shout to truck drivers. I should include them in there. I have several truck driving friends and my dad was a truck driver. That's where he schooled me religiously in the life of truck driving. Hopefully you saw the first T-Dub report in November where I covered some videos from my subscriptions within YouTube. We're on YouTube here and you know, you can subscribe to things and they come to you every time someone posts something new. It's kind of like getting magazines in the mail every day if people are posting stuff. But anyhow, you get the idea. So the December report is expanding. We're gonna, we're gonna and stack on some more stuff because what else are you doing right now? You're sitting around, you're bored, you can't go ride, it's nighttime, you don't have your rally light kit. It might be freezing cold and you're still waiting on your hippo hands to come in. <laughs> you ordered your hippo hands, correct? Because that's the way to ride in the wintertime. Believe me, those bad boys actually work. Okay, carrying on. In the December episode of the T-Dub Club Report, we will cover some more noted videos from YouTube, upcoming ride me, and we're gonna cover some TW200 parts and extra fluff like Dakar Rally, woo! And the history of t-shirts, like what the heck? Okay, yeah. And Tony Alva, like, yeah, I'm throwing curveballs here. You better be ready. Travis Pastrana, okay, okay. You're talking sort of my language for all you brat brat brappers and pit bike racing, cause pit bike racing and Travis Pastrana are kinda like Yeah, alright. Swatch watches. Yeah, okay, GC Rad One, you've technically fallen off the cliff. We need help. Someone call in the medic, check this guy's blood pressure, see what kind of oxygen he's breathing. It's all good, man. I'm gonna link it all together for you. All together in the December T-Dub Club report. But first, a couple of Yamaha TW200s that are worthy of a special mention. Okay, I'm gonna call this the featured a TW200 with three wheels. Okay, check out Jake Gold's T-Dub sidecar. I asked him why, and he responded, why not? It's the best answer, end quote, with exclamation marks. Jake had some influential people in his life who always had sidecar motorcycles, so he said he's just doing his duty to carry on the tradition. 
smiles for miles is what he said when you say all that and i'm like absolutely right i totally get it i totally dig it he said the sidecar project was originally intended for an xr project but that was taking a little longer the t-dub was sitting there the sidecar was sitting there he got bored and there you have it sidecar on a t-dub it's not been the first i was talking to tw 200 world ring leader jim who was saying that there's a guy in pennsylvania that actually makes these sidecars so someone needs to drop me that information and maybe i'll feature him up in here in the next episode but moving on to another featured t-dub that kind of caught my attention i'm calling it the atl cafe t-dub bruce brenzer of atlanta and his his first tw was 14 years ago and it was totally stopped. Bruce had a few bikes, mostly sport touring bikes like FZ1s, FJRs, da da da, but he had been without a bike for three, four years when he saw a totally modified TW200 and that got him thinking. And he had to wrap his head around the idea of doing his own because he was dead set on creating his own. He uh, recently retired in 2018 and he had just the project in mind that he wanted to do. So he bought this nearly stock 2013 TW200 and started getting after it. In the fall of 2019, he went to work on it and he finished it January of this year and dubbed it Victoria. And as you can see, I think it's pretty spectacular. All right, yeah, don't you agree? I sure hope so. TW200 videos from YouTube. This is kind of like where we did last episode in the uh, November TW report. We just kind of highlighted some special videos that I like. We're gonna continue doing the same. In this episode, starting with Aviator Wild. In October 21 of 2011, he uploaded a video called Yamaha TW200, World's Awesomest Motorcycle? Question mark. This video has received 820,000 views over nine years. Pretty spectacular. The video opens with a scrolling script of is the Yamaha TW200 the world's most awesome motorcycle? And then the action drops with him simply having a lot of fun creeping up through some creeks and crossing over some creeks. And that was pretty spectacular in the opening sequences. All in good fun and stuff. But it then goes into a slideshow and I typically don't like videos that are made from still photos. I mean, it's kind of like, I know a video is nothing more than a bunch of photos strung together to make a video. But if the photos aren't making action, it's kind of like, all right, a video about a bunch of photos. You know, we're not talking about Ansel Adams, but speaking on Ansel Adams kind of quality, there are some really nice photos in here. So I'll, I'll cut it to slack and I give it the credit because we've all obviously watched the video Video. It's got a ton of views. This next guy, his uh, YouTube handle, I think it's going to stand for Killing George 01. It's K L N R G J O 01. George on his TW200 uploaded in June of 2011, nine years ago, this video. And this guy probably has as many TW videos as TW Kids, if not more. So I actually counted. He actually has 387 videos, and 98.999% of them are TW. 200 content but yeah this video of his dog is, is thoroughly enjoying the ride and I and I was just cracking up he's got a couple of them with his dog that just humps on the back and he'll ride and going through the fields and you're just like waiting for the dog to fall off and it gets into a sketchy situation the dog just kind of steps off and it's like all right cool he's not blazing across you know trying to kill his dog or anything so hopefully we don't have anyone coming after like ah oh, you're endangering the dog the dog is thoroughly enjoying himself as can be seen that's pretty spectacular if you get bored you can put this channel on just play all day and it's just going to be tdb content all day long so it's actually kind of cool to see how many videos they've uploaded all right now make sure my table's not getting too hot all right this next video yeah Caro kid he uploaded this video called tw 200 trip moab 2018 and it is simply jaw-dropping gorgeous and makes you want to go to Moab today. Yeah, I don't care. Snow, rain, sleet. Like, let's just go. Because it's, it's a spectacular video. My first trip personally to Moab was in 2007. And it was a moto trip with a couple of buddies. So when I see this video, it reminds me of that. And just reminds me of how awesome Moab is. I've gone back numerous times for work before during Easter Jeep Safari. But those were all four-wheel drive trips. Nothing wrong with that. Over this past winter, Till Death Doula Sport and I were talking about going earlier this year. As this group I've seen posting in the TW200 forum usually goes around April. But yeah, 
that all got put on hold this year. We know why, we don't have to say it. So I will just keep watching the Vaquero Kid video. We'll talk on that a little bit further down. All right, let's carry on with these videos. Leisure Time Larry uploaded, do you have space blankets with you? Well, this is his Ridge Ride, part five. Mr. Leisure Time Larry and his buddy are riding in the, man, here we go with those words again, Okanag Okanagan Wenatchee National Forest of Washington State. In his description, Leisure Time Larry said that they started off above 50 degree weather, down below, and in blue jeans. They were just casually riding. But you know how that goes when you go up and you get into the fluffy stuff, and this simply looks like a lot of fun. This is kind of like the epic of epic snow trail riding. There's enough dirt on the ground to get traction. There's snow all around for the visual overload and they're obviously just having a darn giggly time. They probably could have used some warmer pants but you know when you're having fun sometimes you're just getting after it and you kind of don't care. So hats off to Leisure Time Larry and his buddies for making this little video because it makes you just want to go ride in Washington and experience that whole action. It makes you want to ride anywhere in the snow. But look at those cliff edges and mountains and that terrain. That, that just looks epic stuff right there. All right, carrying on. All right, so this next one, I'm, I'm throwing stuff at you in all kinds of directions, but this one's definitely going to throw in a direction of KFR43. He uploaded Yamaha TW Flat Track on January of 2014. How come I haven't seen this video before? Come on, YouTube. Hook up my algorithm, man. Show me all the TW stuff. With a name like that, I have to think it stands for Kenny freaking Roberts and the 43 being three minus the doctor. Signature 46, breaker breaker 10-4. Yes, the doctor, Mr. Valentino Rossi. But there is a Keith Flack Racing number 43, you know, KFR 43. And he's going roundy round in a race car, you know, a dirt track car. But man, I really have to think that this guy is all about Kenny frickin' Roberts and the doctor minus three. I don't know. I'm just trying to make sense of it all. Cause yeah. But anyhow, this TW200 rider is of Asian descent. So I'm going with my first choice that he has to be a Valentino Roberts fan. It's on a Yamaha. What else is there? It's a TW200 going sideways too, y'all. I mean, like... Listen to the video, you'll hear him, he's got his hot shoe and he's scrubbing around. Yeah, this is pretty epic, pretty epic, pretty epic. I grew up racing flat track right here in Talladega. Across from the Talladega National Speedway, there's a, a circle dirt track that's now cars racing. But when I was growing up, that was a major motorcycle flat track. And I'm gonna tell you right now, all the big guys came through there. Kenny Roberts, Freddie Spencer, Jerry Ridgeway, Jimmy Maness, Pee Wee Gleason. I met all of these guys back in the day when I was a kid. So, yeah, flat track and me, and now with the whole teed up thing and seeing this, yeah, I, I, I lost my marbles a few times on this video. Yeah. All right, moving along. Oh, wait, we finished page one. Moving along. I told you it's going to be a long one. Did you go get your milk and cookies? You can hit the pause button right now. Go get the milk and cookies. Maybe you need a bowl of cereal. Maybe you need some brownies. Maybe you need to go swipe some pre-mades from what mom's got going on with the uh, the Christmas dinner. Okay, this one here, I'm going to have a little bit of, I'm going to mess the name up too because he's like word smashing. I like the word smashing. It stands out, but it's hard to say. Uh, sm smitification? Okay, smitification. He uploaded studded tires on ice, modified Yamaha TW. He uploaded this back on February 2nd, 2016. And pretty wild to see a T-Dub on ice, and he made his own studded tires. So in the description down below, I will have his link to how he made his own studded tires. And everything that's in here uh, on these pieces of paper will actually be in digital form down in the description below. So you can check. It's actually pretty rad because he gets his bike, gets up onto the little lakeside there, and... Uh, you know, he's a little nervous at first, you know, you don't know if the ice is going to break through, you don't know if the bike, what it's going to do. So he like starts warming up, warming up, and then he starts brapping out on the throttle. So it's actually pretty rad to see. And the fact that it actually works pretty dang cool. So yeah, so go check that out because guess what? It's snowing outside. Maybe it'll work in the snow. Maybe it'll work in the dirt. I don't know. This next one, he's the godfather of T-dubs on the YouTube channel. Mr. T-Dubs Kid himself recently uploaded TW200 Moto Camping Below Freezing, trying out some new heated gear. 
And yeah, man, like right now would be a good time to have some heated socks and some heated head warmer and some heated gloves and a heated vest. Huh, can I take some heated pants? Can I get a heated, you know, seat for my chair here? I'll go with a heated top deck on my table here too. What else you got heated? I'll take it. Come on, man, because it's winter time and it's cold out here. So I, I love checking out T-Dub Kids and especially when he's going moto camping. That's like that's kind of like the cream of the cream right there. And he's probably done it the most. He tried out some battery powered socks and such and shared his whole trip with us. Always good stuff. So make sure if you haven't seen it, nine times out of 10, you've already seen it if you're hearing me talk about it. But I'm just giving props to those guys out there that are putting in the time and effort to do the videos. And his videos are actually beautiful. But I'm saving the best for the last. And I think this will be my top favorite forever. I don't know why. My all-time favorite, though. This is it. Back on April 25th of 2015, Shane Dono uploaded Yamaha TW Trail Ride Spring in the Pacific Northwest. This video simply makes you want to experience riding in the Pacific Northwest. I'm sure there are times when the whole area is covered in snow and is unrideable, but moments like this and the terrain show, it simply looks seriously fun. The, the music that's in this video is actually what caught me. I accused him of being the guy that created the music for the video, and he said he was not. I asked him if he's gonna make another video anytime soon, and he said he's got so many hobbies stacked up. He said maybe at some point he actually still has the TW200, and for me, that was like yes okay so hopefully he will grace us with another video at some point in time all right so uh yeah let me uh hit this one gotta stay heat hydrated with the hammer nutrition y'all maybe one day i will uh talk to you guys all about what's going on here i don't know maybe if you'll comment down below and be like hey what's up with the heat Maybe I'll, I'll make a video out of it. There's a lot more to the, the brand than just the bottle and the, the juice inside. This next section is events, rides, meets. So here's what you have to do. In order to find these events, first you have to join the Yamaha TW World Facebook group page. This is a private group page for a particular reason because we all love to ride motorcycles at any discretionary time that we wish. Therefore, we don't want grandma knowing that we're out riding at two at night, 12 o'clock day. It's a pipe group. So just go log in, join. That way you can see the events. If you can scroll across there, right about here, you'll see events. You click that down and these events will drop down. But anyhow, if you are in the Canton, Ohio area close by, <laughs> and soon, as in January 2nd, 2021, there's going to be a Polar Bear Ride 202 in Canton, Ohio. So if you dare brave the cold and you already have your hippo hands or not, get on out there, check this ride out. I think it would be pretty spectacular, but that's a little too soon for me to be making that kind of a long haul. I'm still panning for gold and ink has not came off the back order from a dead president printer. Come on, man. I need to get to Ohio. But, nah, I don't really need I, I'm not ready for snow yet. April 23rd, 2021 is Gathering of the Goats 2 in Elk Park, North Carolina. Our man Rex, he put on this rally last year. This is the one I actually made it up to. Also in North Carolina, we're going to stage out of the same place at the Mountain View Motorcycle Campground in April. This is actually probably going to be really, really nice springtime in the Appalachians. I don't know. I might sneak up to this ride. It was spectacular. The next event is June 5th, 2021. It's the TW200 Takeover at Wind Rock Park in Olive Springs, Tennessee. This event, I believe, is going to be more out on West Tennessee side. And I'm actually going to try to make it up to this event. Like, if I have to choose between the two, I'm going to go with this one because down October 15th, I'm for sure going to be back up there for Gathering of the Goats 3 in Elk Park, North Carolina, same place again. Like that fall time was so spectacular that I want to go back for more of that. Can't leave you folks out up there in Washington, June 17th. Now, this is technically not a TW200 only ride. This is the Tour Tech Rally in Plain, Washington. 
you know, plain old Washington. Plain, you know, not airplane, just, you know, plain old Washington. But it's the Tour Tech Rally, so you can get lots of ideas from other motos, and hey man, like, someone needs to go represent the T-Dub tribe. Like, who, who's my Washington folks that are gonna go to the Tour Tech Rally? Come on, man, represent for us. Let me throw a wild card in there. September, okay, September 2021. All right, next year. We got some months to talk about this, but I'm gonna ask you a question. Who wants to come ride with Mob Street 83 and myself in central Utah? All right, yeah, I just, yep, you heard, you heard what I said. The date has yet to be decided, but it will not be Labor Day weekend, which is the fourth and sixth. You got four weekends in September, so we're gonna choose one of the three below the first that that labor day weekend is off so yes i am looking at making the 30 hour 1800 mile trip to the middle of utah i just need gas and i probably got enough mountain house stacked up that i can live off of that but somehow i gotta scrape up the money to get there don't have it right now but i'm trying really hard to make this happen and so we want to ask you like let's start planning do you guys want to make this mega trip to Utah and just go look at his videos? Look at the terrain. It's flipping epic. So yeah, he and I have been talking and we want to do this event. Nick, till death, man, come up. Jason Pedals, y'all come out. Like, let's go. Jim from TW World, come on. Rex, come on. Everyone that did the North Carolina rally, come out to Utah, man. Let's go do this. All right, so how are we going to do this? All right, well, I had a conversation with Jim over at TW200 World. I'm going to post the event on his page, but because his page is private, I'm also going to post it on the TW Club Facebook page. I'll just have to feed information on both things. I'll probably start with a poll of the three weekends, September 10th through 12th, September 17th through 19th, and September 24th through 26th. So those are the three weekends that we have go start looking at your calendar what weekend's gonna work best for everyone matt from mob street over there he's got a buddy that has a place that will allow us to camp on rvs and all but i'll be the guy in the tent but whatever it takes to get you guys there and there's riding for days and i'll probably go early so if some of you creep out early you know that that'll be all right but let's try to target the weekends that will work for everyone and if we can get everyone committed and kind of make some stuff happen it'll be it would actually be epic teed up kids you know come down and everything it'd be rad to have all of us together like i don't know it'd be super rad for all the you know youtube tw guys and non-youtube tw guys if you're on a tw 200 I, I would love to get everyone together out for some epic epicness and if you go and look at the weather september yeah it gets hot down below but you get up to elevation really quick i think he's like base stationed at around six thousand foot so when you start getting up to you know seven and 8,000 foot elevation at roughly the same temperature as it would be on the coast at the same time. I've done a lot of looking at that type of stuff. So yeah, I'm not afraid of the, the temp and the time and the riding there during that time is just epic. So enough of that. That'll be a whole nother thing that we'll get into. All right, so let's get into parts. We know this is what you guys all geek out on because I don't know, it's just what we geek out on. Parts, right? We love parts. All right, so Moto Mule, Yamaha TW200 cargo rack and soft luggage side support. Features install. This is a video showcasing the Moto Mule's new products that he's coming out with. This is need a cargo rack or soft luggage side support for your T-Dub. Here's an option for you. A great option to keep your soft luggage from melting against your exhaust or getting stuck in the tire. Those are kind of key ingredients. So give this video a check out. I will link below in the description how to order his products if you care to take a look at all that. The next items are 3dub200 on Instagram. He's on the eBay selling the products, but he and I got to talking through Instagram. He makes reliable 3D printed parts for the world's most reliable bike. These 3D printed parts are made from carbon fiber reinforced polycarbonate for their lightweight properties and is excellent impact properties. Now, me coming from the RC car industry, I'm not afraid of plastic, especially made with, with the carbon strand. So this is a good product. I haven't tested it out myself, but he's actually been making these things and testing them and doing all this kind of cool stuff. I'll have the links down below. It's it's actually pretty rad. You got a night glow on your bike. You got forward facing headlights. You got electrical grips. You got a heated seat. You need control over all this stuff. Here's a way to do it. 
you know, you need to check your battery. You can get your own, you know, voltmeter. This is just a nice tech product. And I know you guys are out there. There's some techies that, that like to, you know, accessorize. And this is a great way to have electrical accessories and control over those electrical accessories. So check them out. This next piece, I originally saw it and was like, oh, this will make a great spares surplus backup kit. Alloy bolts, polished stainless steel engine bolt kit for Yamaha TW200 and quite economical and stainless steel. All right, do I have to say anything more? Check them out, check them out. Now this next one, this is kind of a interesting one. Waterloo Specialties, a new replacement CDI for Yamaha TW200. Now CDIs are US made by Waterloo Specialties using Japan made parts. That's probably as about as high end as you're gonna get. I mean, yeah, you could get American made parts, but that's gonna be, now you're like really exceeding like Remember, how much did you pay for your TW? Okay, these aren't Chinese parts. They're not even Taiwan parts. They're Japanese made parts. I trust anything coming out of Taiwan these days. It's the old Japan. Now Japan's like US. It's like super spec. They use a microprocessor and have the same advanced curve as OEM, but max advance has changed from 30 degrees to 31 degrees. Plus, it has a rev limiter set at 9,500 RPM and a ground pulse outwire for the electronic tachometer, all right? Come on, man. Sounds like a little bit of an upgrade and a reliable upgrade. Something you might need to know. You may have an old project and you're trying to bring it back to life. The old CDI is bad. OEs are expensive. I don't know. Take a look. Just do your research. All I'm, I'm just providing information. I have not used it. Maybe when mine fails, if, when. Carrying on here. Chain mystery debunked. Cleaning and lubing with Fort 9. Which chain cleaner is the best? Comparison test, Fort 9 simply delivers top-notch production in a very analytical, informative way. Fort 9, we've seen the videos, he's good, but this one really caught my eye because he is not afraid to put the gauntlet down and stack the boys up and be like, all right, let's duke it out. Let's see who's the best. So yeah, I dig this video series. So who is Fort 9? We've all seen the awesome video, Crossing Canada's Only Desert on a TW200 2018 review. But two, I wanted to know more about this Fort 9 dude. I simply went to the About section on his YouTube page and the description said, We create motorcycle content with a rare twist. Honesty. Expect travel documentaries, moto vlogs, gear reviews, motorcycle reviews, crash tests, and more. The engine behind our channel is Fortnite.ca, Canada's largest online power sports retailer, gives us the freedom we need to produce legitimate reviews. We are not in debit to the manufacturers we cover, and that means we do not have to pull any punches. I mean, they don't have to make PR statements either. They just bring the pure raw content and that's what I like. Fort9 is an online store for motorcycle gear and motorcycle accessories in Canada. Our goal is to service Canadian riders with the most extensive selection including motorcycle helmets, apparel, tires, parts, gear, snowmobile, ATV accessories, and yes, PS. Yeah, no. Fort9 does not deliver to the US. I checked, okay? But you can't deny his content is raw and legit and awesome and super cool. Mad prop. So I just, you know, just want to say thanks for creating those videos. Super cool. Okay, no, it's not over. It's about to start. That's what we're talking about. It's about to start. The Dakar 2021 is about to start. Man, to be a fan of Dakar in the US, you, you gotta search, you gotta dig, man. You like, you punching in the Dakar 2021, Dakar 2021 bikes, Dakar 2021 trucks. Those are my two favorite categories of the Dakar rally, the big trucks, and the bikes. Monster Energy Yamaha Rally official team has added American Andrew Short and Boston's Ross Branch to round out their Dakar factory effort of five riders with Adrian Van Beveren, Franco Cami, and Jamie McCanny. All right, Yamaha fans, we got to support the Yamaha team that's out there battling it out. And we have an American on the team. So yeah, man, like just, you gotta get in there, hit the views, hit the likes, and let's get after this whole Dakar effort that Yamaha is putting forth. Now, I'm, I'm thinking about doing the next one just all about Dakar, and especially from a Yamaha perspective, because Yamaha Motorcycle won the very first Dakar in 1979. So just kind of put that on your thinking cap for a second. And yeah, I know this is veering off from 
not being TW200 content, but as TW200 enthusiasts, we're adventure enthusiasts. We love motorsport. We just happen to ride TW200s. So you gotta cheer on our fellow Yamaha enthusiasts and also support our favorite brand, which is like, yeah, Yamaha. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go deep, deep, deep into the Dakar deep dive. That'll be coming up. And also remember too, when it's January 3rd here, it's already January 4th on the other side of the planet. So technically January 2nd start, actually you can actually start right now. I've already started watching prologue videos for the Dakar 2021. This is the second year that it'll be in Saudi Arabia. And man, I'm gonna tell you right now, the production quality that Dakar is starting to drop this year is absolutely insane. These shots and video clips and the just the little pieces, they just make you melt. They're so epic and so awesome. Like I just, you know, forget racing the Dakar. I just wanna spend the whole month T dub in the Dakar. Yeah, now we're talking, right? It could happen. It could happen. We all gotta have a dream, right? All right, well anyhow, moving along, moving along, moving along, moving along, because our little T-dubs are always just trying to move along. This is where things are about to get a little interesting. Side notes, history of t-shirt, Tony Alva, Pastrana P-bike race, all coming up right here. Oh yeah, and don't forget the swatch. All coming out. Do you need to go and restock your glass of milk? So a funny thing happened inside one week, rather randomly. While doing some research on t-shirts, I came across a blog post written on the history of t-shirts. One particular part that the author, Will Harris, wrote that really caught my attention. Now, I have a long history with t-shirts. I actually worked in the t-shirt garment industry for like 10 years. I actually drew t-shirts for a living for quite a long time. Yeah, that's kind of how I got my start out in California. Sometimes you're at the top of your game of what you do, but sometimes you just kind of have to go back and, and look further beyond your history, like the history of the t-shirt itself. It's just a weird thing for some people, I guess, to think about. But for me, anytime I get into something, it's like the history of water bottle. You just start researching back, like, well, where did the first water bottle come from? Who started it? Why did it start? How did it happen? Blah, blah, blah. And I like to just have all that collective information. But anyhow, let's talk about this. Though the t-shirt was created in the 20th century, it was rare to see it worn as anything other than an undershirt. You remember your grandparents, you know? They only wore their t-shirts underneath their shirt. Heck, we don't even wear t-shirts underneath our dress shirts anymore. Sometimes, maybe, I don't know. I still see people wearing them, but, but in the old days, people wore a t-shirt, they wore their shirt over that shirt, and it would still be 105 outside. And it was cotton shirt at that. We don't wear cotton underneath. We know this already. But t-shirts are cool. We wear them, just hopefully not when we're being active. But anyhow, it wasn't uncommon to see veterans wearing a t-shirt tucked into their trousers post-World War II. But outside of that, t-shirts were almost exclusively used underneath proper clothing. Let you sink that in for a moment. But in 19 1950, Marlon Brando famously donned a white t-shirt as Stanley Kowalski's in a streetcar named Desire, only to be followed by James Dean in 1955, Rebel Without a Cause. Thanks to these two founding fathers, the popularity of the t-shirt as a standalone outerwear garment skyrocketed. Okay, now, James Dean, yeah man, crazy car guy, but I didn't know about Marlon Brando, kind of before my time. Not kinda, way before my time. Even James Dean was before my time, but my life in motorsports made me very aware of, you know, James Dean. I've actually been to his crash site in California, you know, that whole thing going up to Laguna Seca, blah, blah, blah. But I didn't know that those two guys were the first guys to wear t-shirts that kind of created the trend of like, oh, it's cool to wear a t-shirt outside of your formal shirt. Okay, so you may have all known that Marlon Brando was the OG king of t-shirts. I didn't know that. But for me, the original king of t-shirts was Tony Alva. Yes. Tony Alva. This next king of cool was my OG king of cool when I got into skateboarding back in 1977. And yes, in 1977, I was right here in Alabama. Less than 15 miles from here, 1977, I got my first skateboarder magazine, immediately saw that Tony Alva was the godfather in the magazine, and I actually got my first pair of Vans tennis shoes in 1977, and I got laughed at when I wore them to school. I got laughed at at school, 
but I knew I belonged to something much bigger than where I was right here. I had this magazine and it showed me that there was some cool stuff going on out in California and that became the initial spark. It was like, I gotta go to California. And I got there, that was rad. All right, cool. Anyhow, within the same week of reading the history of the t-shirt blog, I came across the Tony Alva story, Jeff Grosso's love letters to skateboarding from Vans Tennis Shoes. Ha ha ha, right? So they posted this video. Jeff Grosso passed away March 31st, 2020. We had just gone into quarantine and the news spread fast of his passing as we lived in the same neighborhood of Costa Mesa, California. Van's headquarters is right next door in Santa Ana, California. And yeah, it was, uh, Jeff Grosso did these cool pieces. And so Van's assembled all of this together as a tribute for while we're on the subject of cool cats, I love mini bikes. It's how I got into the T-Dub, as I was riding XR100s with my daughters. But again, that's a whole nother story. I have lots of stories. But I like how Travis Pastrana rocks the minis. There was a time when pros would practice a lot on minis because to go fast on them, it forces you to ride smooth and learn how to carry speed in corners. So. I will, I will say this to you guys. I know a lot of you are dreaming about getting bigger adventure bikes. Go for it, knock yourself out. But I will say this, you will learn more faster on a smaller bike. Think about picking up a Mini because yeah, you can get just as hurt, if not more hurt, and more likely to get hurt faster on a Mini bike because you're trying things at a higher level than you normally would. It's, it's the old saying like, yeah, I might ride a 750 to 75% of its potential, but at XR100, I'm gonna ride that thing 125%. So that's the cool thing about the minis. So back to the Pastrana. Pastrana Land Pit Bike Championship 2020. It's just simply cool, but it makes you think about what can happen with a pit bike. And these guys are pushing the almighty limits of these bad boys. And not that you wanna go beat up your TW, or maybe you have a second TW that's just your super thrasher, but at the used rate, of these things you might want to like look at the used prices of a TTR, a KLX, an XR, any of those minis that are like 50cc, 80cc, 100cc, any of those pit bikes is something to think about. It can be a lot of fun and I'm actually looking for a couple of them for the house here for my daughters again. They actually started on XR 100s but we were riding bigger stuff you know out in the desert and you know bigger mountains and that type of thing. For this tight wooded area that I have here I'm probably gonna go I don't think I'll exceed a 80 or a 90. Anywhere from, from 50 to 80. So on another side note, I have a little history with Pastrana myself. You obviously know that that's Travis Pastrana over on the right. And yes, we're talking rally cars here. When Travis Pastrana became interested in pursuing rally, I was actually already rallying at that point myself. And I was in the UK during his first ever test with ProDrive. Who is ProDrive? Well, ProDrive is the British motorsport and advanced engineering group based in England. They design, construct, and race cars for companies and teams such as Austin Martin, Mini Cooper, Volkswagen. And back then, they were the team behind Subaru's rally effort. So if you put ProDrive and Subaru in the same Google search, baba bing, you'll see where I'm coming from. ProDrive, if you're a Subaru fan, ProDrive, it's kind of like TRD for Toyota or a Nismo for Nissan, Mugan for Honda. So Pro Drive is woo for Subaru. All the greats came through there. Colin McRae, Ari Vatnin. All right, we can go on and on for days. Anyhow, this story could go on for days, but it has nothing to do with TW200s. Just go watch the Pastrana Land Pit Bike Championship 2020. Yeah, we are not even thinking about riding our TWs that hard. It's just food for thought. Want to push your skills? Don't get a bigger bike. But back to that first photo. Who are those shady characters on the left? In the black t-shirt is my man Scott G. He and I got together during my TMRM zine days due to rally cars, and we became lifelong friends ever since. After he and I went to the UK together, we came back and started our little crew of rally enthusiasts called the Gravel Crew. And you may have actually seen his T-Dub cameo in this video clip that I posted on the Yamaha T-Dub Club Instagram. Was it last year or this year? I can't know, but I don't know. There it is. So behind him is our man, Marty, also a Gravel Crew member, and he speaks fluid 
finish. And we didn't know this until one day we were at the Rim of the World rally and some of the Finn guys had came over. Marty knew they were gonna be there. And we're all standing there talking to these guys and Marty went into Finn mode and we're like, what the? And we're like, oh man, this is crazy. And they were impressed, da 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 da. You know how that goes. It was just super rad to find out that our friend that we had been hanging out with, we had no idea that he spoke fluid Finnish. Try to say that three times fast. So, flank of my man Scott G on the far right there is Travis Brock. Yes, the Travis Brock of every single Sunday. Sir Brock also knows a thing or two about four wheels. And actually, that car, I believe, belonged to Travis Brock. I can remember it's so many years ago. But yeah, well, that's how we all got together. Rally cars. And uh, yeah, you've seen every single Sunday, right? You want to see some hard enduro stuff happening and some cool stuff, crazy stuff happening on two wheels? Go check out my man Travis at every single Sunday. All right, carrying on. Yes, Yamaha and Swatch Watch. Did you know that Yamaha and Swatch did a little something together a long time ago? I completely forgot about it and I just didn't technically put two and two together until recently. Yes, kind of going through some of my old swatches. Run across this. It's a 1985 spring summer collection collection classic swatch watch called the Yamaha Racer GJ700. Start searching for them boys and girls, but this is going to be the official watch of the Yamaha T-Dub Club going forth. The big question is, is how did Swatch and Yamaha come about all of this? Like, it's just very casually, it's just a name. There's no logo, but it does look cool. Like, it could be a, a, a gauge cluster, and there is a black, like, prototype edition, but I do like the fact that this is the yellow with the black. It'd be rad to have the strap with the speed blocks on it. That would have been proper proper but there you go if you're a yamaha fan here's just a little something to seek out just to show your yamaha fanism so here's another one for you are you down with the blue crew check out the yamaha fandom gear page it's officially licensed yamaha gear i'm barely working and so i'm trying to financially support my family and do my thing and make all this continue happening i started a amazon and affiliates page so if you buy products through this page it will financially help me you win i win you may find it cheaper somewhere else i don't know just go check it out if you will thank you I will leave you with this. Not to like or dislike, but from a pure curiosity level. Curiosity itself is an adventure. This video is an adventure of sound. Everyone has their perception of what good music is or is not, but the point I'm trying to push is the exploratory adventure in finding and or creating. Be it sound or anything, you're going to have to hit the link above or see the link down below in the description. I'm just showing you that. If you want to hear it, you're going to have to go there or there. But I'm signing off. GC Rad 1, December T-Dub Club Report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all the likes on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. We would really appreciate it if we can all get together and come out and have a little sesh together in Utah. That would be super rad. That's all I can say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Da -da 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 -da. And thank you some more. All right, next report will be the Dakar Rally Report from the Yamaha T-Dub Club because Dakar is coming up January 3rd, 2021. I got to get you guys up to speed, man. We got to do this. I like Dakar. It's crazy. I come from Rally. So it's, you know, Rally and motorcycles. It's, it's one of those things. You just have to like the Dakar. It is the biggest. All right, here's how big it is. 2,900 miles. That's crazy. That's like the distance of the United States. And yeah, you can travel across the United States in three or four days, but try it in the dirt. Try being lost in sand dunes. It's a mega, mega battle. But hey, we'll save all that for later. Planting the seeds. Just get ready. Here we go. All right, peace.